Hey, what is up, fellow Raiders? This is Vulcan Dan, and in today's Raid Shadow Legends video, we will be talking about a time stand event that will begin or that, that will coincide with Clan versus Clan, which is going to start in an hour and 29 minutes, as you can see right there. All right, and uh, this time stand event is, of course, for the Shadowkin faction. We do have a few, not all of them, but a few Shadowkin champions that will uh, be part of the time stand event because we have Shadowkin Crypt opening in two days, and that is on top of Clan versus Clan. So you will uh do the shadow can crypt while clan versus clan is active so you can get those extra points and of course it seems like clarium is doing these uh time stand event during clan versus clan because of course that's an additional way for them to earn more money but if you're a free-to-play player like, like myself you're most likely uh, or the best uh way for you to do this is to skip and wait for a times two event we are expecting a times two void chart event coming right up uh that is why i'm saving all, all of these i have 43 void charts now looking forward to that one and while we're in the topic of clan versus clan i just want to share some really quick tips especially for those free-to-play players or low spenders on how to do well uh during clan versus clan like myself i'm here in a top tier clan we are currently ranked 22 i'm probably the only free-to-play player in this entire clan but i'm able to hang with them i'm able to keep up with them because of the preparations that i do to make sure that i get a lot of points not as much as, as them of course but still a lot of points for a free-to-play player during clan versus clan so that i'm pulling my own weight all right so what do i do i save my books i have a lot of epic books legendary books i don't use them except for clan versus clan and uh if, if there are no personal re rewards i don't even use any of my books i will only use these if there are personal rewards so we do not have personal rewards for this clan versus clan that that will happen today so i will still be saving these books for the next one for a lot of points all right so that's number one and also as you can see here i have a lot of energy saved up i have my refill right here even my arena tokens right there and energy arena more energy here more energy right here because i am saving all of those when clan versus clan starts so that i can get uh, the most efficient output for all of these and energy if i use them now i will of course get points for events and tournaments but not for clan versus clan so if you're a free-to-play player you really have to be uh this way you have to save all of your energy and then once clan versus clan starts you use them and uh that's that's uh one way for me to get a lot of clan versus clan points and of course faction wars and tag team arena don't do them yet make sure you don't uh until clan versus clan clan versus clan starts some sometimes out of habit of course like we've already started uh faction wars even before clan versus clan starts i am a victim of that as well just out of habit but fortunately today i was able to remember hey don't use your uh fact or don't do faction wars yet wait for clan clan versus clan but you can of course uh finish clan clan boss first you do not get points from the clan boss runs you get points from the clan boss chest that you get so make sure you finish these beforehand to get them out of the way and of course doom tower as you, you can see i have three keys left here because yeah i don't want to get this energy yet uh, i i will do this once i'm out of energy and this will provide another refill for myself so yeah this is all that i do to prepare for clan versus clan and i think uh pro probably the number one tip more important than saving books the best way for a free-to-play player to get a lot of clan versus clan points is the forge you do get a lot of points here i i think uh if you get a legendary six piece item it is 500 points if i'm remembering it cor correctly and you can do this really quickly sometimes you'll just get 20 points sometimes you'll get 50 100 but you'll get that occasional 500 points so this is a very easy way especially if you of course have a lot of forge material sitting right here to get those very quick easy uh clan versus clan points especially if you're towards the, the the tail end during the last hour or two of the event and you really need to push for more points i always always go to the forge yeah so those are the some of my free to play clan versus clan tips and all right let's go to the times 10 champion for the shadowkin we have three legendaries and three epics all of them are somewhat useful for uh shadowkin fashion wars we have buran gear right here of course which is notoriously popular because of his uh cheese uh you know how how, how he's able to cheese bommel the the dreadhorn uh, because of this passive right here this passive is somewhat useful in faction wars but of course you don't want your champions dying uh you will have to need or you will need a reviver and the only reviver that we have is sachi and it's on her passive so we currently don't have a reliable reviver in shadowkin faction wars so make sure your champions stay alive 
Yeah, but he's great in the faction wars because of this uh, A2 AoE stun. 60% when booked on a 3 turn cooldown. For, a, uh, for an epic champion, this is very good. 60% stun, AoE. You can, of course, bump that up, bump that up to 65% with the mastery. And he also has the strengthen and shield on his uh, A3. And it provoke on his A1. So yeah, stun and provoke in uh, on the same champion. Really a very good faction war champion right there. We also have Toragi. Yeah. Even if you have a lot of legendaries ready to take on Faction Wars, Toragi should probably still be in your team because his entire kit is simply great. He has a decreased attack on his A1, uh, AoE Provoke on his A2, and a uh, Shield and Ally Protect and re Reflect damage on his A3. So yeah, I'm planning to use Toragi in my own Faction Wars team. Uh, he's also HP based, which makes sure that he stays alive a lot longer. And the last one is a Void Epic is Genbo. Now, this guy is not really a Faction Wars champion, but in the early Faction Wars, if you just want to get, get it done very quickly, then of course, he can get that done for you because he's an, an attack type champion. He hits really, really hard, but towards the later stages, he might be a little bit squishy. He's mainly an arena champion, uh, so you would also want to build him with only 70% crit rate because of this skill. He will give himself an additional 30% crit rate and grant himself an extra turn to immediately go into his A2, which is an AoE hit that hits really hard. Uh, but yeah, in the early stages, you can use him, but in order to 3-star Fafnir Wars, uh, you have to keep all of your champions alive at the end of the fight, and Genbo might die in those later, more difficult, difficult stages. So yeah, just make sure you're careful about that. Three epics, we also have three legendaries. First one, we have Genzin. This one, uh, this guy is known for his AoE decreased defense. He... His skills basically give him a lot of turn meter on his A1, on his A2, and on his A3 as well. But other than that, uh, he uh, his skills are not that impressive as the other champions in this list, including the epics. But I think uh, because Plarium gave him so many turn meter fills on his skills that they're saying, all right, so we, we can sort of tone down his skills. But still, doesn't make him a very, very attractive legendary other than this AoE decreased defense right here. But yeah, that's one. We also have Kyoku. Now, this one looks really cool. Also, really, really strong. He, she has this uh, passive that is similar to Seeker's passive whenever she gets hit with a critical hit. Will heal all allies by 15% of their max HP and then places an increased defense on everyone. I think for Seeker, it only heals uh, Seeker. But for this champion, since she is le le legendary, she heals your entire team 15% of her max HP. So that's kind of huge. She also has this ally protect and block damage on herself and grants in an extra turn. This is on a four turn cooldown, so that's basically a three turn. And then this block damage, it says here it's a three turn, but since, since she will get an extra turn, this is technically a two turn block damage. And then she will do an AoE decrease attack. But if, if any of the champions are already under decrease attack, she will place HP burn instead of very unique skill that I don't really remember any, any other champion having this kind of skill. And then she has this uh, very unique A1, will place three hits instead of a single hit if the target is under three or more debuffs, and she will place weaken. So yeah, very good champion. Definitely a lot more attractive than Genzin. And the last one, which I think is a very popular champion, and I'm very fortunate to have her. I think we had a times 10 event for her along with a times 2. I pulled shards, I pulled void shards, and I was very lucky to pull her. She's great. Yeah, she's a support champion. She places this remove, uh, or she removes all debuffs and then places a block debuffs on all champions for two turns and then heals all allies by 35% of their max HP and a further 5% for each debuff removed from them. This skill is crazy good. It's on a three turn cooldown as well. And I, my Riho, I've actually put her in a relentless set. So that three turn cooldown is sometimes just two, two turns because she gets those extra turns. She always removes debuffs and always heals the entire team. Her A2 is a crazy single target and basically gives you all of the, the debuff, this diseases, gives you COVID with all of these HP burn, decrease defense, weakened, decrease attack, decrease crit, crit rates. It's almost like giving the opponent COVID right there with, with a stun. So yeah, so this is a very cool skill. And her A1 get, gives a lot of heals, especially on a relentless set. This one, uh, you'll get so many heals with this champion, so which, which makes me think that she actually pairs quite well with... Uh, that new fragment fusion that we will have, uh, Upper Din, clan, clan Father, yeah, because of course for the continuous heal. So those are the three legendaries, three epics that we will have for this times 10. 
personally of course i will not be pulling but maybe some of you out there are looking for these champions and of course it uh goes to clan versus clan points yeah hoping that everyone is ready for this shadowkin crypt very excited for that one we do get some extra rewards for this one we're starting here with 400 energy we also have a void shard epic books void shard legendary book five star chicken right there yeah really looking forward to that one yeah that's it thank you guys for watching uh good luck in your clan versus clan and if you found this useful don't forget to, to subscribe to this channel see you guys in my next video